Well, hey, YouTube. Matt M. Roy back again. Today, I have a kind of a special video for you guys. As you can see on the table here, I have my uh, vintage laptops. And I have done videos about each of these individually. Uh, but I believe that was before I got my high-definition camcorder. So I want to make basically a better quality video. I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these and uh, let you guys know how and when I got them. So without further ado, let's get started. I know quite a few of you guys know about this. This is my uh, IBM ThinkPad. This is model 380XD. And it has an Intel Pentium processor and I'm gonna go ahead I believe it's hundred and sixty six megahertz I'll be honest with you though guys I have not used this for some time let's go look at uh, the specs here genuine Intel processor with 96 megabytes of RAM uh, I did upgrade this when I originally got this I believe it only had uh, 16 or 32 and I was able to use all the random uh, uh, so dims that I had laying around and of course this takes PC uh, 133 or 100 RAM and luckily I was able to get it up to uh, 96 megabytes if I go into the uh, my computer here uh, hard drive on this is a 3 gigabyte and it should still have quite a bit left because I did reinstall Windows 98 on this. Now this would have originally come with Windows 95, but you know uh, when I first got it, it had 98 on it. It ran so well, I just decided to uh, reinstall that. You could see it on there. Uh, basically, at only 224 megabytes used out of the three gigabytes available. So I have some projects in mind for this. Uh, I want to load up some more games on here. I've just been really busy lately, so I haven't really had a chance to get these out. I really like the design of the keyboard on this. Um, as you can see, the rise is very, very nice. Uh, compare this to a more modern laptop like this one, you can see that they're much more flush to the keyboard, where these have a much nicer uh, feel to it. So when you type on this, I mean, it feels like you're typing on a desktop keyboard. Uh, this just has the uh, track point, doesn't have a track pad, which is fairly common for uh, IBM Think pads of this vintage. But you can see it's in very good shape. Uh, this is actually rubber here, and nothing's worn off or anything. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of um, shiny, a little shiny part on the space bar there, but the other keys for the most part still have their um, coarse feel to them. Even the enter key's in good shape. On the front you have your two uh, big stereo speakers and the sound on this is really, really good. Turning to the side here, we have the CD-ROM drive. I believe this is a 24X CD-ROM drive. And a good old floppy drive on the bottom and I'm really glad it has that because some of the Windows 98 games that I like to play um, I have only on floppy disks so it saves me from having to transfer them to a, a USB drive or burn them to a disk. Uh, just a vent here. Good old infrared port. Um, oddly enough, uh, this infrared port is really not populated, but the operating system, the BIOS, that is, still thinks there is one there, so I just keep it disabled. Yeah, turn it around to this side. Oh, and you can see the hinges are still in very good shape. No play on them at all. All right, on this side we have uh, the CMOS battery, which goes in there, uh, Kensington lock port, something that is not used in this model, um, that might have been for some uh, smart card or something back in the day, but it wasn't used in this particular one, two PCMCIA uh, type 1 or 2 cards, I don't remember which. Uh, if someone can tell me on that, I'd be really grateful. I'll probably look it up later. Uh, a volume rocker, yep, that's right, these old uh, ThinkPads, quite a few of them actually had a volume rocker, which I wish most modern laptops had, because it really makes it easier than having to use the function key and adjust it on the keyboard. Uh, got a audio out port, and let's see what that is. Uh, microphone, so you got microphone and 
input and audio output right there. That looks like a special microphone jack. I'll have to look that up and see what was supposed to be used there. And you actually have your power switch here. Instead of a button, this actually has a switch to turn it on and off. Go ahead and turn it to the back here. Uh, you can see you have your external keyboard mouse port. You have the uh, power plug on here. It uses a standard 16-volt uh, IBM uh, DC adapter. One USB 1.1 port. And last but not least, we have our various array of legacy ports. We have uh, serial, parallel printer, and then of course your VGA out, which really isn't legacy, but it's just in that general area. Yes, it is missing the door. There should have been a door here, but got broken off sometime before I owned the system. So that again is the IBM 380XD. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to this Toshiba here. Uh, this is quite a bit newer. This was probably from around 1997. Now we're moving up to about 2001. Uh, Toshiba Satellite with a Intel Celeron processor running Windows XP. On the front here, you still have a volume rocker, which Toshiba was famous for using. Up, up, up until a few years ago, most of the satellite laptops still had a volume rocker on it. A various array of lights here. Uh, what we got here? AC, AC in power, uh, system power. We have the battery charging light, hard drive, and floppy and optical uh, disk activity. Headphone microphone port your latch for closing the screen, various play and fast forward and stop uh, media buttons which don't work with VLC media player so they're kind of useless to me. Little trackpad there, not too much wear on that at all actually this laptop's in very good shape for its age. Um, keyboards in really good shape again just that side of the spacebar a little bit of uh, wear there you can kind of see. Uh, up here, though, everything else on here is near mint condition. Power button, and then we have, let's see what that is. I believe those are to adjust the brightness, and I think you can program those in Windows to do some other functions as well. Pardon me, guys, I'm having some allergy problems today. On the side here, we have which would be the Wi-Fi switch, but this particular model did not does not have Wi-Fi built in. I guess they just put this switch in all of them. That's why you can see on this side I have the Wi-Fi card. A blanking plate. Uh, we have a DVD-ROM CD burner combo drive here. Turn it to the other side. This is where the battery goes. Uh, the battery does hold a small charge on this one, but for not very long. PC CMI or PC card 2.0 slots with a Linksys Wireless G 2.4 gigahertz card with the speed booster. So theoretically, this can work, I believe, up to um, 108 megabits per second, but it always usually just goes at 54. Just go ahead and plug that back in because, again, we will need that to get on the internet. Got a little uh, grill here for cooling purposes. And on the back, we have the AC port, which is still in really good shape. You can see the speakers are actually built up under here, and I really don't like that because, depending on how you have the screen situated, it actually blocks those speakers sometimes. We have a 10 100 Ethernet port, three USB 1.1 ports. Yes, they are 1.1 ports. This is about a year too early for USB 2.0. And a legacy modem port. Now, under this door here, you'll also find some various legacy ports. You have the uh, VGA out, uh, parallel printer port input, and then right there you have a... Uh, composite video in, or I'm sorry, composite video out in this case. Um, I don't can't imagine ever using that because if you were to hook this up to a regular tube TV, which is really the only time you would ever use that versus a uh, VGA adapter, this would absolutely look terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Um, I only have one adapter, so I'm charging the battery on this. This one's been on charge for at least an hour, so should have enough life to at least do a startup here. 
see she is running Microsoft Windows XP, which is what it came with originally. I believe this still has 512 megabytes of RAM. Um, the last time I showed this, it only had 256, but I upgraded it um, about a month after that. Oh, one thing you can see with this, this was a very common problem with these Toshiba satellites. There is a lot of play on that screen. The hinges are kind of worn, that is. And for those of you that are interested, this is a Toshiba model 1415. S105. And again, from right around 2001. And as you can see, I guess the battery didn't really take too much of a charge because it is telling me that it's dying. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the adapter back in. And again, on here, I think it's right back here. Yep. Luckily, I have one adapter that works with these two laptops. Love that sound. I had to reboot the system. I think it was just ready to cut out because of a low battery. And when I plugged the AC adapter in, everything just froze up. But it seems to be working okay now. Uh, this battery, the last time I used this computer, about maybe seven or eight months ago, hold, held a little charge. But now it's basically stone dead. But, yeah, that's not surprising. I mean, this laptop is pushing 15 years old. Uh, as you can see on this one, I did install some games. Uh, a video I did a while back of playing Jazz Jackrabbit, um, I filmed on this computer. I have Jazz Jackrabbit 2, uh, 2 Christmas Hair, and 2 Holiday Hair. So, this is kind of a neat little system to play vintage um, games on. And because this is Windows XP, it'll play most of the Windows 98, 2000 era games as well. I'm going to go ahead and check this and see exactly how much RAM I have in here. Again, it's been a while. I don't exactly remember. Pretty sure it's 512, though. Yep. Upgrade this to 512, and this is an Intel Celeron uh, 1.6 gigahertz system. So, even back in the day, this was just a bare bone system. I mean, this would have been like your bargain basement Black Friday special of the day. <laughs> But again, like I said, I it, I actually got this one at our local uh, thrift store, and I didn't pay much for it. It was somebody donated it with a whole bunch of other laptops, so you know it was worth picking up for me just to play some games on. Video card in here is half decent. It's a GeForce 4 420 Go. And I was actually a little surprised because usually the lower end laptops, especially back in the day, usually just came with Intel graphics. But as you can see, it's only 16 megabytes, so unfortunately there really isn't too much you can do with that. And just for you guys who are curious, this is running Windows uh, XP Home, because Professional would run like a dog on this. Well, that's all I'm going to say for that one. Um, we're going to go ahead and move over to this Toshiba, but for this Toshiba, but first I have to uh, shut this down and switch the AC adapter over. So, be back in just a minute, guys. Before I switch over to the last one, <laughs> I still love that sound. Again, before I switch over to the last one, I just want to let you know that I also bought this one um, at the, one of the local thrift stores. This uh, ThinkPad I've had for some time, though, and I don't exactly remember what I paid for it, but let's put it this way. I believe it was under $10. So I have this one shutting down right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull it because I think it's got enough power to at least shut down. I'm going to go ahead and plug this power adapter in, which is not the easiest thing to do one-handed. Go ahead and move this over, give us a little bit more room, and we can talk about this Toshiba. This is another Toshiba satellite. Uh, this one's running Microsoft Windows XP as well, at least that's what it was supposed to be running. You can see this one is absolutely not running Windows XP. So let's go ahead and start this system up. Mm -hmm. I guess it didn't take... There we go. I remember the power button on this one was a little finicky. Toshiba! Uh-oh. 
Uh, I kind of figured that because, like I said, these have not been plugged in for some time. So the main battery went dead, and that caused the CMOS battery to die. So I'm going to have to go ahead and enter in the uh, correct date and time, and then we should be good to go. All right. She's booting up, and as you probably have already guessed, this is running Microsoft Windows 2000 Professional. Reason I did this, even though this does have a legit Windows XP sticker, is I figured since I already have a slightly newer Toshiba laptop running XP, I'd like to have something running Windows 2000, and this just wound up being the perfect computer for that. This one, what's booting up, I'll show you, it does have some more wear. You can see that the paint, the gray paint, is kind of rubbed off from people putting their palms there over the years. Um, the buttons are still good. This here is a quick disk access, so basically you can listen to a CD without actually having to boot up the whole computer. You just click this switch, put a CD in, and then use this to control your normal functions. You've got play, stop, rewind, fast forward. Same array of lights as you had on the other one, basically. This one does actually have a floppy disk. Um, it does work. And I'm, again, glad it has it because with, with this being Windows 2000, I have quite a few uh, games that I like to play that are on floppy disks. So, saves me some time. You can see the operating system is... That is very loud, but it is booting into the operating system. Keyboard on this one shows, again, normal wear. They always tend to have wear on that, um, that part of the spacebar, which tells me these are definitely owned by right-handed people. Um, because you want right-handed people favor the right side of the space bar. I have seen a few laptops in the past where the left side was more worn and obviously they were more a left-handed person. You can also tell by the shift key. You can see that that shift key has absolutely no wear on it. Whereas this one, just on the edge here, there's a little shiny bit. So that's just a neat way to tell if the person who had this laptop before you was uh, right or left-handed. Over here we have the battery compartment. No, no, I'm sorry, that's the hard drive. We have the uh, modem, a DVD-ROM, CD-ROM, no burner in this, so no CD burner at all. Of course, no DVD burner. It'd be a little too old for that. On this side, we have the good old volume rocker that Toshiba always loved to use. This is the cover for the battery, which, again, on this one doesn't really hold a charge. Uh, PC card slots here, two of them. Uh, cooling vent and Kensington lock port. And if we go to the back, here we have our legacy ports. Again, the same as the other one. Chiba tends to keep things the same over the years. Uh, parallel printer, serial, VGA. This one, oddly enough, even though it's older, actually has two USB 1.1 ports. So this computer is a little bit older. This one is like the beginning of 2001, whereas that one was from like the end of 2001, beginning of 2002. Headphone microphone port. Uh, infrared up here, uh, composite video out, we have our uh, keyboard or mouse, external mouse input, uh, 10 100 Ethernet port, and then just our AC in. And that is about it for the ports on this one. So you can see I have really nice uh, custom background on here. Um, I'm trying to remember, I guess, I believe this background came on an old floppy disk that I had, and unfortunately the disk has uh, gone bad now. I didn't get a chance to copy it. Now I can't, it won't read in anything, unfortunately. But I always kind of like this. Kind of remind me, I remember when we used to read Animal Farm back when I was in uh, grade school, and I always kind of pictured it looking like this. So let's go ahead and look at the specs on this one real quick. This one has 512 megabytes of RAM, but for some reason, um, Windows 2000 never reads the full 512, so it reads this 507. And that could also be uh, the video card. I believe this one does have an Intel video card. Uh, we'll go ahead and check on that in a minute. You can see that it is Windows 2000 Professional running Service Pack 4. I have thought of getting the unofficial Service Packs installed on this, but I'll be honest with you, I really haven't had a chance to do that yet. I really got to adjust the sense the mouse sensitivity on this. It is way too high. This mouse pointer is going really fast. <laughs> Let's 
go ahead and see what hard drive is in here. This one has a 20 gig hard drive. As you can see, only 3 gigabyte is used, so we could definitely put some more games on this. And we'll go ahead and check the uh, video card real quick. Uh, this one does not have Wi-Fi built in, nor does it have a card, so I don't really connect this to the internet, which is fine because, again, I use this to mainly play uh, vintage uh, Windows 95, 98, maybe 2000 games. Uh, it actually has a Trident video accelerator. It's the Cyberblade XP AI-1. I guarantee you this shares some video uh, system memory for the video. Um, I had forgotten, actually, this had a Trident card in it. Uh, that was very, very rare, especially around 2001. Trident was known for making questionably cheap cards back in the DOS and Windows 3.1 days, but once Windows 95 hit, you really didn't hear much about these cards at all. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this trip down memory lane. I sure know I did. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.